Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to this Holy Mass of Sunday, the 17th week in Ordinary Time. In today's Mass, I continue to offer prayers and offer this Mass for you and for your loved ones. Pray for the intentions you will bring today to God. Pray for all those who have asked our prayers during this period. Ask God who knows their needs better than we do, that God may reach out and bless those needs. I also like to offer today's Mass for Reverend Sister Catherine Okba, who passed away um, this week or last week. Pray that God may grant her rest, that God may bless her sacrifices and her service to God's people as a religious and as a medical doctor. Also pray for all those who are sick. Pray for those who are in critical care. Pray and ask that God may help them find healing and experience the mercy of his love. Pray for those who have anniversaries or birthdays today. Ask God to grant them many more fruitful and joyful years in this world. Pray for prisoners. Pray for those with mental disabilities. Pray for those on the fringes of society. Pray and ask that God may minister to their needs. We pray for our government. We pray for our people as we strive to contain this virus. That God may help us work better together in, in keeping our country safe and keeping its people safe. Pray for our leadership, our church leadership. Pray for the Pope. Pray for our bishops and pray for our priests, especially those who are sick with this virus at this time. Pray for God's healing. I'll invite you to please send your intentions. Today, God is asking us, as he did ask Solomon, if there is one thing you need me to do, what will that be? Feel free to, to share that here and let us pray for that thing that you need from God today. Our opening hymn will be, Lord, you have come to the seashore. Lord, you have come to the seashore. Neither searching for the rich nor the wise, Desiring only that I should follow. O Lord, with your eyes set upon me, gently smiling, you have spoken my name. All I long for. I have found by the water at your sight I will seek other shores. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, today the 26th of July is also the memorial of Saints Joachim and Anne, the parents of our Blessed Mother. We ask their prayers, technically they are our grandparents, spiritually. We ask their prayers and intercession for all of Mary's children. To prepare ourselves for these intentions and yours, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. 
we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that we, with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those things that endure forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night, and God said, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David, but I am a mere youth not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge, to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours. The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding, so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up until now. And after you, there will be no one equal to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your commands. I have said, O Lord, that my past is to keep your words. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Lord, I love your commands. Let your kindness comfort me according to your promise. Let your compassion come to me that I may live. For your law is my delight. Lord, I love your commands. For I love your commands more than gold, however fine. For in your precepts I go forward every false way I hate. Lord, I love your commands. Wonderful are your decrees, therefore I observe them. The revelation of your words shed light, giving understanding to the simple. Lord, I love your commands. Second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good to those who love God. We are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, 
so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys a field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant serving, searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great value, he goes and sells all he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they hold it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both new and old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, dear friends, and or good afternoon, wherever you are uh, worshipping with us from. I hope and I pray that this week will be a better week for you and for your loved ones and for your families that the Holy Spirit will guide you to new places, to new ideas, to new plans and guide you to places that will inspire hope and not despair. Today I said at the beginning that God is placed us in front of himself on this Holy Sunday and like Solomon he has asked us tell me one thing you want me to do for you and that question is true today as it was thousands of years ago with Solomon God is saying to you Philip or whatever your name would be Tell me one thing that you want me to do for you today. And I hope, like I requested, if you could send whatever it is, let us pray to God for what that is in your life today. I, I believe, as the letter to the Hebrew tells us, it says, and that's uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. This God you see here is the same today, tomorrow as he will be forever. So he is, as he was with Solomon, so he is today. So ask what it is that you need. And let us pray about it. Now, with Solomon, when God asked him what he needed, he asked God's grace to do God's work. He says, give me grace to do the work you have given to me. That was what Solomon asked God. Give me grace to accomplish a task you have given to me. 
He didn't ask God to give him more things or whatever. He just says, give me grace. I want to do this work you've given to me. And I want to do it well. I want to do it right. I want to do it the best way you want me to do it. I really want to glorify your name with this work. So he said, give me grace. Give me understanding. Give me wisdom to do the work that you have given to me. Now, that is very insightful. That's also very instructive. Because there are many of us who have not really identified what task God has placed on us. What job God has given to us. Maybe today, you want to take the time and think about that. God, what task, what is my role in this wide world? What is my role in this church? What is my role in this family? What is my role in life itself? What is your tax, the specified tax you have given to me? And what might be the other implied tax that you have also given to me? Give me grace to do both and to please you by doing both and doing them well. Maybe that's something that um, our leadership would need to also ask, whether it's in our church, in our families, or in our government, to understand that the tasks that we have, that the roles that we have, are all assigned us by the Almighty God. Not because we are special or unique figures. We all, we may be all of that, but all of those are given to us by God, and is counting on us because we will account for how well we did it. Solomon knew that, so he knew to ask God for grace to do the task God has given to me. And God said, because you have asked for this, to do my job, I'm going to give you that. And I'll give you other things that you also did not ask for. I'll bless you more than you could ever imagine. That is very interesting. Because I'd like you to hold that thought as we go back to the gospel reading and see what the Lord Jesus is saying to us here in the, in the gospel. He presents three parables. I'll focus on the first two. The Lord said, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again, and out of great joy because he has found this great treasure, he sells everything he has and buys it. The second parable, which looks like the same thing, but not the same. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds one of great value, he goes and sells everything he has and buys. Now, you realize in these two parables, the kingdom of heaven is compared, or at least it is made to, in a sense, compared with great treasure. It has great value. And it's something you would sell everything for. You will give everything just to possess, just to have, just to be a part of it. Just to have a piece of it, you will be willing to give everything. See, in the first parable, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. Now, this treasure is buried in a, in a plot of land. The person who finds it knows that he could never afford this treasure. It's impossible. It doesn't matter if he sells the whole everything he has plus himself. He would never be able to afford the treasure but he could afford the piece of land that the treasure is buried in. Because the treasure doesn't have to be big. It could be small, but it's more expensive than a piece of land. So, so he recognizes that. And because he is wise and smart, he knows if he, t if, if he is asked 
to buy this this treasure he could never buy it he could never afford it but he could afford buying the land and whoever has this land doesn't know that the treasure is buried in that land or maybe he knows but doesn't care really wants to give so he goes sell everything sells everything and buys the land with the treasure buried in the land that's also cool because the kingdom of heaven is like that it is this treasure you or I could never afford it doesn't matter how much we try we could never buy we could never buy it and this takes us back to the years where the church used to sell um, sell graces and sell blessings and sell the kingdom in indulgences as though you could buy the kingdom of heaven but the kingdom of heaven is not something you could ever afford it doesn't matter how wealthy you are it doesn't matter how rich you are it doesn't matter how good you are it doesn't matter how it doesn't matter who you are you could never afford it it's going to be given to us god knows that we could never afford it but he knows what we could do and he is going to count on what we could do to give us everything else now realize when solomon asked god give me grace it was almost like give me grace. i know i could never do this whole work because solomon made that made, made that point very clear who could ever do this kind of work that you've given to me no one i need your grace to do it so no one could ever no one could ever deserve no one could ever afford the kingdom of god that we could we are able to afford the piece of land which is able to do the work that god has given to us we're able to do it well and if we do it well god blesses us alongside that land gives us a treasure which is his kingdom if you do what is right that's why solomon was so wise he says god see this tax you've given to me i know if i can do it well there is so much benefit and so much blessing inside this tax that you have given to me that you compare that to the piece of land your tax is that land whatever that land is that god has given to you inside that land is a treasure is his kingdom he's not asking you you could never afford that treasure but if you are able to manage that job that he has given to you that work he's given to you and whatever that is whether it's in your career your career or it's in your marriage or it's in your church whatever that work is you define it for yourself what role god has given to you to play in this world in your family in your church in civil society if you find grace to do it right inside that job god has a blessing that will change your life forever believe it not my word that's god's word says this man could never afford the treasure but he knew to buy the piece of land that means he knew to give himself he sold everything that means he sacrificed everything to do that work well once he was able to do that work well god blessed him you know super abundantly there is work for that and there is justification for that god also said to us if you are able to do small things well then i will entrust you with even greater riches but if you aren't able to do the small tax i give to you there is no chance i'm going to give you something more something better something greater because trust is earned not commanded it's earned and so that's what we see from the first parable and so it lines with what solomon did god has given you a tax how well are you doing this tax because how well you do it will determine what benefits come from it how well you do it will determine because you have to do it well before god will increase and multiply your blessings now in the second parable the kingdom of, of heaven is like a merchant this time the kingdom of heaven is not a pearl but it's like a merchant who is fine looking for fine pearl 
and this is so very sweet it's really really sweet because what I hear the Lord saying here is that I am that fine pearl he is a merchant I am a fine pearl because the kingdom of heaven that is God all right and it's like a merchant so the merchant is a kingdom so the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant who is looking for fine pearls he finds one of great value he gives everything and buys it and we see that in in the gospel of saint john for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that anyone who believes in him might have life and have it abundantly and, and so this is what the lord was speaking of i believe in this parable god is a merchant seeking for you you are that much valuable and jesus also said it that god counts the numbers of hair the, the, the hair we have in our hair and he no, he never um ignores a, a sparrow that falls to the ground and dies so he sees everything and jesus said you are worth more than tens to ten thousands of sparrows so god places a high premium on me and he places a high premium on you and he's willing to do anything and everything to make sure he, he has you to make sure you spend eternity with him and jesus also said that in his final prayer in john's gospel the 17th chapter he says father let all those you have given to me be with me wherever i am that is his desire he is willing to do anything and everything to make sure that you spend eternity with him so god sacrificed his own son the greatest treasure just to possess you scripture says we're possessed or we were owned, or we were bought by the precious blood of the Lamb. We were bought and paid for by extraordinary sacrifice, the sacrifice of the only Son of God to buy you. That's how trash, that's how much treasure you are. That's how much value you have. That God is willing to sacrifice everything just to have you. So, so you realize. That the kingdom of God is not just us seeking. But the kingdom of God is primarily God seeking for us. And giving us every opportunity to earn it and to own it. But there will be many of us, I'm sure, who will be seeking everything else. Because we are distracted by everything else that what has what I call apparent value. Dazzles before our eyes. But there is nothing inside it and we may miss out on what has real value you realize the land may be very bushy may be very outgrown but there is value inside it so sometimes opportunity that comes to you don't look very very beautiful that land i'm sure was grown with, with grass and with all kinds of things but there was something buried inside there sometimes the things that god have given god has given to you may not look so exciting may not look the kind of things you want but i hope you can recognize that inside that tax that god has given to you is a blessing that outshines everything you could ever imagine everything you could ever ask for everything you could ever need and request from god when we read matthew's gospel the sixth chapter i think that's verse 33 scripture says seek first the kingdom of god and its righteousness and everything else and everything else will be added unto you seek first the kingdom of god and i hope dear friends that we will seek the kingdom of god first and that we will do everything and give everything to seek it because when we have it the bible said everything else will be added unto you everything else will be given unto you now there's a chance that even in our request today many of us will be asking for a lot of things and there's nothing wrong with that don't judge yourself on that but i think god is also putting us to the test asking us to see what really matters to us if we were going to ask him god give me grace to seek your kingdom 
with every ounce of grace and energy I got. Knowing that within that search for the kingdom, every blessing, every other blessing I need is, is, is sown closely knit to that kingdom. But that is the mystery that God is revealing to us today. My prayer and hope that we will recognize that our God works in strange ways. Obstacles in God could be stepping stones. Failure in God could be an opportunity for victory and win. So let us ask for his spirit to lead us, to guide us, just so we're able to recognize whatever God places in front of us. To know what to choose, to know what to ask, knowing if we ask and do right, our blessings could never be underestimated. Our God is great and gracious and will bless us super abundantly. May God who has given us this opportunity to make and to place our request also help us to make the right request. But above all, let us ask for grace to do God's work. If we do God's work, God will do his work. I can assure you. If we do God's work, God will do his work. So always I'd like to end by reminding you that you are the delight of Almighty God and that God loves you very much. Let us pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord speaks to us as he spoke to King Solomon. Ask what you would like me to give you. In prayer, let us come to him and seek the hidden treasure, the pearl of the kingdom. For our Pope and Bishops and our Priests, as they work for the coming of God's Kingdom on earth, that they may seek God's Kingdom in their, in their that they may seek God's Kingdom in their ministry, and not personal or private profit and benefits. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for leaders of nations afflicted by poverty, famine disease and injustice that they may listen to you O God and learn from you how to care for their people let us pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer for those working for a fair distribution of food and resources of the earth that God may protect them and that God may bless and reward the causes they're fighting for for greater equality and justice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own efforts to choose the hidden treasure of personal faith and prayer, that we may commit ourselves ever more resolutely to seeking God's kingdom, knowing in that search God rewards and blesses us abundantly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those who have asked our prayers at this time, 
for those in critical care, for those with cancers and tumors, for those with other forms of ailment and diseases, and for those caring for them and providing love. That God may watch over and grant grace for every need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are special events today, birthdays or anniversaries, that God may bless them with more opportunities in their lives to celebrate. For those without employment, for those who are homeless, for the poor and seniors who live alone, that God may inspire their neighbors to show them gratitude and grace and come to their help in this moment of need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, especially Sister Dr. Catherine Opa, who passed away last week, and Raphael Dina, who passed away also last week, that God may grant them rest and peace. And that God may bring comfort and healing to all those who grieve their passing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and they are for our death. God of providence, Lord. You call people into your kingdom. You make all things work for our good. We are confident that you hear our prayers and that you will grant our requests today and always. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gift, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to the right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory. That you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with yours in this one chorus of exalt and praise as we are playing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, 
the Lord took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Sister Catherine of Perth and Raphael Bina, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant, O Lord, that they who are united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Third Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages, we may merit to the co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. My dear friends, from me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be filled. Prayer for grace to participate spiritually in this communion. Most gracious God, your people around the world, in most cases, are still unable to, to attend Mass and receive it physically. They now have the grace for spiritual communion. We beg, O oh God, that you who nourishes souls, minds, and bodies may reach out and nourish their hearts, their souls, and their spirits. May they receive the full effect and the full benefits, O oh God, the full treasures of this sacrament. And may their lives be enriched, may their lives be nourished, and may their lives forever be blessed. Let us pray. 
we have consumed the Lord, the divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he, promised, he himself gave us with love beyond our telling may profit us for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sin of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the means of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us and for participating in this Mass with us. I come to pray for you, and if you forget anything and everything I said, don't forget, you remain that pearl of great value that God is willing to give everything for. That's how much he treasures you. That's how much he values you. And I hope you take that seriously and do everything to seek God's kingdom first and let everything else be granted unto you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. To the prayers of our blessed mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friend, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn will be the summons. Will you come and follow me if I get cold yawning? Will you go where you don't know and never be? Listen, will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you? In